You guys are really somber. Good morning. All right. That's the way we like it. Loud and proud, right? Y'all awake? No? Thank you for your honesty. You know, it's, it's nice to know when you ask a question, someone gives you an honest answer, you know. Are you doing okay? Not always, you know. Eh. You know, people don't like to hear that, you know. They don't like to hear that, well, you know, I got this little lower back problem. They're like, I just really wanted a quick answer that you're, you know, you're fine. <laughs> Move on. You know, some people, that's all they want. Yeah, superficial people. You know, we're not superficial people, are we? We're God's people. And, and when God's people hear that somebody's not doing well, what do they do? They pray. They pray, they pray, and they pray some more, right? And they, and they ask what they could do for that person because that's important, right? What can I do for you? What can I do for you right now other than prayer? You know, can, can I come and pick you up? Can I give you a ride somewhere? Can I cook a meal for you? You know, as God's people, we want to take care of God's people. Because God has taken such good care of us, right? All right. All right. A little preaching right there. Let's lift up our Bibles and let's, let's, let's show some victory. Okay? Let's give some victory where victory is due. Father God, we come to you victorious over your magnanimous power, Father God. That you have given it to us freely. Oh, there is a price that was paid, but Father God... We'll talk about that. And, Lord, we ask right now that you would just continue to reign your Holy Spirit upon us, that Jesus would continue to touch us. Father God, that your words would continue to be whispered upon the air, Father God, that we breathe and that blows by our, our heads and our minds and our ears, Father God, that you are whispering, whispering in the wind, Father God, that we need to be still, we need to be silent, but we need to be bold and we need to be strong. And, Father God, that we have your word, your promises right here, Father God, that you have given to us. And, Lord, we stand upon these principles and these precepts that you have given, Father God. Because this is the way we want to live our life, looking exactly the way you desire us to look, just like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, we're going to be kind of going through this little five-part series that I'm working on and uh where did i put it yeah it is uh what is it you want to learn and today there's there's five parts in this and it's instructed directed protected corrected and invested so today, we're going to be talking about the instructed part of what is it you desire to learn. So we're going to be breaking down, if you want to turn your Bibles, to Corinth, uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Colossians 3, 1 through 17. That's primarily where we're going to stay is right there. So wherever you have that in your Bible, just stay there. We're going to kind of break these little verses down into bite-sized segments, and we're going to be talking about these, all right? So we all, well, all right, not all of us. Women like to read instructions. Men do not. You know, I mean, there are some guys that probably do like to read instructions. You know, we kind of we kind of look at the pictures and kind of go, okay, I get the just. You know, I think I could, I could build this. I could put this thing together. You know, and then when you get done, you have all these extra parts left over, and you're like, what was I supposed to do with that? You know, it seems sturdy. It, it seems okay. You know, I think, that, I think my son could probably ride this down the street without the front wheel falling off. We, we, we tend to skim over some of the things that are important in the instructions. You know, like mixing chemicals. There's some chemicals you just don't mix, right? Like bleach and gasoline. Bleach and gasoline you do not mix. It will catch on fire. You do not mix carbon peroxide in bleach. It will burn <laughs> tremendously. Okay? There, there are certain things you just need instruction for. And, and we need to follow those instructions to the T. Okay? 
I, I, God gave us his words. This is the instruction manual, basic instructions before leaving earth, right? The Bible. And, and we need to follow these words. We need to follow these precepts. He said every word is important. Every word. Every word that God ever spoke has meaning and purpose to be delivered in our life to help us along this path that he has chosen for our lives. In each and every one of us, we're going down a different path. Listen. Peace can refer to a number of different situations. There's world peace, which we all desire. We would love to have world peace, would we not? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if every nation on this planet got along? Man, if, if they would all just learn that God wants to just love you where you're at. But he also wants you to love those that are around you where you're at. Wherever you go, whatever you do, if we could only have world peace. There's interpersonal peace. Do you know what interpersonal peace is? Inner peace. That's that peace that you are trying to find within yourself. Each and every one of us. We are all battling something, are we not? I mean, it says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. And each and every one of you has a heart, I would hope. We all have a heart. Don't look at your husband like that. No, I'm just kidding. She's like, honey, do you have a heart? No, I'm just kidding. And we all are battling something. There's always something in our life that there's a darkness that we are trying to overcome. It might be something that you're addicted to. It just might be something that you're conflicted with. It might be a situation in your life that you want to control, but you have no control over. Can we control everything that goes on in our life? No. Can we try? Yes, we can. Will we succeed? No, we will not. <laughs> Just letting you know, that's the truth. Okay? That's a fact. We cannot control every situation that goes on in our life. Sometimes we just need to sit back and let the pieces fall where the pieces fall and be there for those that are falling apart when they need to be put back together and be helped up. Amen? However, the most pressing need for any individual is peace with God. Amen? Why do we need to have peace with God? Anybody? Because he brings peace. He is peace. Right? If you don't have peace with your creator, what's the point of doing all this? Right? I mean, when we come to God, when, when, I, was a, when I was a Christian, when I was a, a first beginning Christian, when I gave my life to God, I wasn't at peace. I wasn't at peace with God, but I knew where I needed to go. I, I knew who I needed to talk to about that peace. I, I knew that if I got into God's word more that I would find that peace. I would find that understanding. I would hear his voice speaking to mine, telling me that everything is going to be okay if you just believe. Right? Why do we got to complicate it? I don't understand why we got to complicate it. We're all sinners at war with God until we lay down our arms and submit to his lordship. How many of you have laid down your arms completely and given yourselves over to God completely? Not too many hands are being raised here. Thank you for your honesty. We are all hanging on to something that we don't necessarily want to give to God. Oh, I, I can handle this all on my own, God. I, I can do this. Okay, he'll let you. Go on ahead. See how far they get you. In the first section of Colossians 3, Paul writes to encourage his readers in their general mindset and behavior. Could I have a water, please? Thank you. So turn your Bibles to Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Colossians 3, 1 through 17. Thank you, my friend. 
need to get a humidifier in here. Mm. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Take that warning. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practice and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Mm. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Mm. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Paul concluded in this section. We, whatever we do, he writes that whatever we do in word or deed is for God's glory, not ours. We should be running this race because we want to succeed for ourselves. I don't want to win for me, do I? What am I going to gain from myself? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. But if I'm running this race, and I'm running this race because I want to see God's face, <laughs> then that's all the trophy I need. Right? That's all the praise I need. That's all the hand clapping I need or the whistling and the cheering. That's all I need. When I see God's face at the end of that road and he's smiling at me and he is saying, well done, my servant. You've done exactly what I've asked you to do. You finished this race well. You've got through it well. Welcome home. This is an overreaching principle that should govern our life of behavior. Amen? I mean, those principles that I just read about should be the, the cornerstone. They should be the capstone, not the cornerstone, the capstone, which holds our lives together in the firmament, in the foundation of Jesus Christ. In everything that he has done for us, that should be the thing that we build upon our life. That's the thing that people should aspectfully see in each and every one of us. When I walk into a crowd, I shouldn't have to say a thing. My actions should say everything that I am. If I walk in angrily, what do you think they're going to think? That I'm angry. 
If I walk in like I'm the boss, what are they going to think? Well, <laughs> he's kind of haughty about himself, isn't he? Right? But if I walk in compassionately, gracefully, joyfully, ha, I know this day and age we need some joyfully, right? Then they're going to think something else. They're, they're going to be like, you know, I don't know what this person has got, but I know I, I want some of that. I need some of that. Those are the kind of people that make great leaders because people aspire to be like them. I don't want to be like an angry boss, always talking down to his, uh, his employees. I don't, I don't want to be like that. I want to be the type of boss who my employees enjoy coming to work. They get up every morning, they're like, man, I'm going to go to my job, and I'm going to do my job because my boss likes me. You know, the other employees, we're all getting along. We're all hanging out. We're all doing this thing together, you know, and I know they've got my back because they know I've got their back. In Christianity, that's the way we're supposed to be, is it not? I mean, we are supposed to aspire to be like Jesus. Where Jesus went, people followed. Where Jesus was going, people anticipated his arrival. They were excited to see this Messiah. They were excited to have this this wonderful Lord and teacher come about into their community and say, teach me something. Heal me. From something. We need to be just like that, do we not? I mean, what are, what are we doing in our community? What are we doing? We should be loving on people, right? Regardless whether they come to this church or they go to some other church, we should be loving on people. Amen? Paul provided specific descriptions of what doing all things for God's glory should look like in how we think. In Colossians 1 through 4, it said, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life appears then you also will appear with him in glory right there talking about what jesus did for us what god did for us he didn't have to do anything for us did he he could he could have just put us down in the hamster cage and said well you got food you got water and you got a will get get going that's not what he was doing with us he was like i want you to you to baptize them in the name of the Father. Hello. All right. It may be the battery's dying. We might. I, I tested it on my tongue, and it was a little weak. So we might need another battery anyway. Handle the desires of the flesh. Paul gives us instructions on that. Colossians three eleven. Here the. slave or free but Christ is all and is in so what is that saying that the desires of our flesh can overrule where we are who we thought who we think about who we're talking to Right? And it doesn't matter. 
It's not just categorized in one specific person group, is it? The rich aren't free from that. The poor definitely aren't free from that. And the middle class, well, you all, we all know that we're all getting it <laughs> from both sides. Right? And it's not just talking about sexual desires. It's talking about the desires of the flesh, greed, <laughs> jealousy, hate, anger. Those types of things. Paul also says, and how we should care for and treat one another. This is vitally important to Christianity. This is vitally important to our path that we're walking on with God. Okay? Colossians 3, 12 through 15, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, you are God's chosen people, right? Can everybody say I'm God's chosen people? Or person, whatever. Politically correct. I'm holy and dearly loved. Say that. I'm clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Right? Because we are to bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Are you forgiven? Thank you. I am forgiven. Y'all say it like you mean it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So we are to forgive as we are forgiven. Right? I mean, I know that there are situations that somebody has made somebody mad, and we are to forgive them the way that we have been forgiven. God has taken it, he's crumpled up that piece of paper, and he's thrown it in the fire. Never to be read or unfolded again. You ain't making no paper airplanes out of that bad boy. It's gone in the fire. Right? And we are supposed to do the same thing. I know that somebody might have hurt you bad. They might have said something against you that wasn't true. They might, they might, have, they might have physically done something to you that is absolutely heinous and unspeakable. But we are to forgive them. We are to forgive them just as we have been forgiven. And over all these virtues put on love, mm, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. So would you say that love is like the super glue? Yeah, it's like Gorilla Glue. Just don't put it in your hair. And add water, yeah. It just makes it tight. That's the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be tight. So, you know, we have that living water, and God's love is the Gorilla Glue. So, you know, if we put those two things together, we're tight, right? Are we tight, family? Yeah, we tight? All right, we tight. Paul says, he then identifies that the basis for empowering that kind of thought and conduct, okay? So to have that kind of power empowering in your life and that kind of thought, we should conduct these things in this manner, all right? Colossians 3, 16, it says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs for the, from the Spirit. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. How many find it hard to sing songs of gratitude when all it seems like everything is falling apart around you? Yeah? Amen? I can raise my hand to that. I'm telling you what, there's nothing like soaking worship music. There's nothing like listening to music when you're down and out. When I'm angry, I, I want to go and I want to be by myself for a little while so I can talk to God and confess my anger to him. And I want to listen to some music too while I'm doing it. Because music does calm the savage beast. I'm telling you. You know, we were watching a TV show. And in the TV show, uh, 
this young man came to this village. And it got to the point to where they were hidden in the woods. And a couple of the people inside the village said, he's going to bring them upon us. They're going to they're come looking for him, and they're going to find us. And then they're going to arrest us and imprison us. And so he decided he was going to leave. Well, the young lady that was there that had fallen in love with him said, it's just like men to leave. It's your nature. I don't think it was his nature. I think she was missing the point of what he was trying to do, don't you think? Sometimes we do things because we want to protect people. It's, it's part of that admonishing. It's part of that teaching. He left, but he did come back. And they had gratitude in their hearts. Amen? Sometimes we need to get away from the situation we're at. We need to go sing some songs, listen to some hymns, maybe read a couple verses in this, in this book, you know, take that thing off the shelf and dust it off, you know. Take that, take that sword and, and start sharpening your mind with it. Paul concludes the section with the exhortation that we make sure that whatever we do in word or deed is for God's glory. Listen, Colossians 3.17, it says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Can a bartender, this question has been asked to us, can a bartender give everything that they're doing in word and deed to the Lord Jesus? If that's the job that, that they're at, absolutely. Absolutely. They're right there in front of people. I know of many of bartenders who are Christians, good Christians. And they get put down because, you know what, you can't be a Christian and be a bartender. You're, ser you're serving the sin to these people. No. No. I'm giving them a refreshment, and it's their choice whether they choose to continue to drink more and more and more of it, which is called gluttony, which causes them to sin. I'm here as a reprieve, and they pray for these people, and they talk to these people. I mean, if you want to know anything that's going on in a, in a community, talk to a bartender. They know. <laughs> you know, it's like the gossip center of the world. Following these general instructions, Paul offers specific ways believers can faithfully steward the virtuous relationships that God provides. Colossians 3, 18, 3, 18 and go to 4, 6. Colossians 3, 18 through 4, 6. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as, a, as, it fit, as it is fitting to the Lord. Now, okay, that was for wives. Now, husbands, listen up. Love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Okay? Children. Children, you listening? Obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And we want to please the Lord, don't we? Shake your big head, yes. All right. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only with their, when their eye is on you, and to carry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Mm. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ 
you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrong, and there, and there is no favoritism. Masters, provide your slaves with what is right and fair, because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message, that so that we may proclaim the master of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward others. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Has anybody ever watched any of those, you know, history documentaries on slavery? I remember there was this one that uh, they were talking about, and the slave owner had all of these slaves. And when it came around to where they signed the proclamation to free all the slaves, he freed all of his slaves, but none of them left. Why do you think that's so? It was the way he treated them. So instead of becoming slaves, they became employees. And they stayed and they worked at, on his uh, cotton fields. And they became, they became very wealthy people because of what they decided to do. Because of the way that he treated them. Don't you think that we should be treating people the same way? Right? You know, we're not supposed to show malice toward people. I mean, somebody gets your order wrong in the drive through it doesn't mean cuss them out, does it? You know, maybe we're supposed to go back to that admonishing and teaching moment. Hey, this is not the right order. You know, is it okay if you, you know, can we get try to get this straight? You know, it's okay. You know, if it happens five times, so what? Right? Apparently, they weren't the same person that dealt with your meal. Okay? It's okay. You know? Why, why do we allow these little things to tick us? Yeah? Sometimes your kids get the adult meal, but that's okay. They enjoyed it. <laughs> they didn't eat it all, and you got to enjoy it later. Because of the work God had done to make us alive in Christ... We should be focused on things above where Christ is. If we continue to focus on earthly things, what happens? Our eyes become clouded. Our minds become judgmental. And we start thinking exactly the same way that the world thinks. And so we start looking the exact way that the world looks. Oh, we might all dress the same. We might all smell the same. Well, some of us. We might all have the same hairstyle. I wish y'all would get in with this. It's, it's trendy. It's very trendy. But if we don't focus on the things above, we start looking like the world. We start acting like the world. We start treating people the way that the world treats people. Why are Christians different? Why are Christians singled out? Because we've got this concept of love. I want to love you where you're at. But that's not where I want to stay with it. Right? I mean, if, if God loved me where I was at, and that's exactly where I stayed, I wouldn't have gone any further than the gangs, than the street. I would have never left that. I would continue to be there because I knew, oh, well, God loves me. He's all right with me doing what I'm doing. That's not where he wanted me to stay. We are to meet them where they're at, but take them further, right? Grab them by the hand and say, come on, there's something better here for you. There's something different. There's a lifestyle that you're not living that God desires you to live. And the only way you're going to do that is, you know what, you've got to feel his love. You've got to feel that change in his love that he desires for your life. Colossians 3, 1 through 4, it says, Since then, 
we have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, when you gave your life to Christ, you died. The old man is dead. Let him live. Let him die. Let him die. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, he is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Because of the future return of Christ in glory and the associated glorification of believers, we should put on our new self, right? Walking in the newness of life and avoiding the idolatry of focusing on things to serve our flesh. We've got to get past this, well, you know, what can you do for me mentality. And start thinking about what can we do for the kingdom of Christ. What, what can you and I accomplish? Because when there's more than one of us thinking about the things of above, then there's going to be more of us thinking about the things above. Because two will influence many, will they not? I mean, you can influence a lot of people by yourself. You certainly can. You certainly can. But when you have somebody else who's on the same wavelength as you, when they're thinking the same way that you're thinking about the things above, you can accomplish way more. And then if we're all, oh, can you imagine all of us sitting in here, all on the same page, all of us on the same wavelength, all of us thinking about the things above, how many people do you think we could change? How many people do you think we could touch? Hundreds of thousands? Hundreds of thousands upon a hundred thousands? Can we do it? Yes, we can. Bob the Builder says we could. Colossians 5 through 11. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. You didn't know that? You know that now. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. Listen, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of uh, its creator huh. here there is no gentile or jew circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave or free but christ is in is all and is in all when he says we are to we we have taken off the old and we are putting on the new which is in the image of its creator that's what I was talking about before. When we're walking into a room, what do we want people to presume? I want them to think, this is, a, this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. This is a person who believes. This is a person who has faith. This is a person who has joy. This is a person who has peace. This is a person who has patience. This is a person who has gladness. This is a person who believes in the healing hand of Jesus Christ. When we walk into a room, I want people to feel that. I want that kindred spirit that's in each and every one of us to leap within us. Right? Because of joy exceedingly. Not just the smile on my face. Not just the bounce in my step. But I want people to feel that spirit that's within me, resonating from me into them. We all want that, don't we? Amen? You all, you all know you've had that experience in your life where you've walked into a room and somebody's like, don't I know you? No, you don't know me, but your spirit does. Your spirit recognizes my spirit. Let's sit down and talk. Let's talk. Let's not miss those opportunities. You know what? From now on, from this point on, if somebody looks at you and says, don't I know you? 
you say, you bet you do. Let's get together and talk. Right? Because that's their spirit. Maybe their spirit is hungry. And they see your spirit full. Mm. Right? Or maybe you need some food or thirst. And you see, and your spirit sees that their spirit is got it. And you need it. Don't miss that opportunity to take that time to talk to somebody. Don't I know you? Yes, you do. An important aspect of walking in this newness of life is in how believers treat one another. And that should be characterized by love and its specific expressions, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Are we not supposed to have those characteristics when we are dealing with new believers and with each other? Amen? Colossians 12, 3, 12 through 14. It says, therefore, as God's chosen people, hallelujah, holy and dearly loved, I am, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Those expressions of love ought to be based on the peace that God has provided for us through Christ. And that peace of Christ should be a controlling factor in how we think and act within our own body. Amen? Because we have been called to be part of that body which, which are other believers with other believers. And, and that's who we call family, right? Are we family here? Right? Amen? We ought also to be grateful for these things. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I'm grateful for the time that you take to pray for us. Because we need it. Thank you. Thank you for lifting us up. Thank you for being a part of our life. Our lives are changed. Our lives are different because of your interaction with us. And I thank you for that. I'm grateful for that. Colossians 3.15. We're almost done. Colossians 3.15, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. The key is to diligently allow the word of Christ to be at home in us. I mean, if we're reading God's word and we're not comfortable with it, he's not at home with us. We're not at peace with him being inside of us. So we talked earlier about that war that dwells within each and every one of us. That's that war that you're dealing with. He wants to dwell in us richly. As his word shapes us, we can be sure that whatever we do in word or deed is for God's glory. The word should change how we talk to each other, how we treat each other, how we look at each other. I should be able to look out across the room here and say, you know what? I know what you need. I know what you've been through. I know your history. And it ain't no mystery to God. It should provide us avenues to build one another up and to teach each other. Amen? I mean, there's things I can learn from you just as much as you can learn from us. And I have. I have. And will. Yes. And will. Again, this is always to be accompanied by gratitude and thankfulness to God. Amen? After providing these directions, Paul, from Paul, and before discussing the expectations of our conduct in specific relationships, 
Paul covers overreaching principles that help us make sure that whatever we do in word or deed is for God's glory. So whatever we have read about, whatever we have talked about, we need to make sure that it is for God's glory. God gets the final say. Amen? He's the one that gets the praise. I don't get it. Don't give it to me. Okay? Because you'll hurt me. And I don't want to be hurt. I'm not big on pain. Right? We need to give all glory to God. All glory to God. Right? In this also, we are expressing our thankfulness when we give glory to God. I try to make that the first thing that comes out of my mouth when I'm saying a prayer. Thank you, Father God. I don't want to forget. I don't ever want to forget what he has done for me. I want to be thankful for that. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for what you've done, what you've taken me through, what you have kept me from, the unseen things that I don't know that are going on behind my back. I don't know. The things that are going on above my head, Father God, I don't know. The things that are going on below my feet, Father God, I don't know. That you have kept me from these things. I haven't sunk in the ground, and I haven't been flung through the air, and I haven't been ripped apart, Father God, because I'm thankful that you are watching over me, that you are guiding me, and that you have already taken care of the situation. Hallelujah. We have been given these important tools that enable us to make sure that whatever we do in word or deed is for God's glory. Those tools include a heavenly focused mindset. Are you heavenly focused? Is your end game to get to heaven or just to be dead in the ground? I want to go to heaven. You know what? Uh, you know what happens to me after death? The worms can have all of this. They can have it all. It's a big buffet. Right? I want to make sure that my end game is in heaven. And so, what am I doing to make sure that I am going to get to that end game? I'm making sure that I'm living according to these principles and precepts, according to these instructions that have been given to me. I I want to live this Bible. I want to read this Bible. I want to indulge in this Bible. I want to make the before I leave earth, basic instructions before leaving earth. I want to make these instructions the best part of my life. I want the warning label on my back to say, careful, he's a Christian. Right? Surgeon General's warning. <laughs> This may cause the enemy some pain. (laughs) Careful, he's a Christian. Consider the old self. You need to consider that your old self is dead, and you need to put on the new self. You need to put on a heart that expresses love and its individual characteristics, allowing his peace to govern your hearts. Are you allowing his peace to govern your hearts? You'll know it if you start reading this book. If you start reading this book and the words that are in this book cause you uncomfortability. That means you ain't got peace in your heart with it. If it makes you uncomfortable. You know what? If being a Christian makes people uncomfortable, that's because their spirit is uncomfortable with my spirit. Being at peace (laughs) with my creator. Why do you think so many people lash out at Christians without even knowing them? You ain't walked a mile in my shoes. You don't know me. Right? I mean, before society can judge me, walk a mile in my shoes. Get to know who I am in Christ. And then if you feel you need to come back and judge me, by all means, come on back. Because my God is bigger than that. Amen? In addition, being constantly filled with and focused on gratitude and thankfulness is a desire of God's heart for each and every one of us to do. When we were putting these tools to use, when we do put these tools to use, we are more likely to ensure that whatever we do in word or deed is for God's glory. Amen? So you've had your instructions. 
You've had, you've had your teaching. You've had your moment. You understand what God is trying to get across to you, I hope. That we are to take off. The, what you take away from this is right here. You died. The old man is gone. The old woman is gone. And the new person is now in Christ Jesus. And you know what? That bracelet that was big and famous back then, what would Jesus do? That needs to be the mantra for our life. You know, it really does. It really, really does. What would Jesus do? If we stopped and we thought about what would Jesus do in every situation of our life, don't you think we would have better situations? I, I think so. I think there would be a little bit more joy in our situation. I think there would be a little bit more understanding of our situation. I think there would be a little bit more kindness through the situation, a little bit more grace, a little bit more peace, a little bit more joy. Everybody want joy? And when we're doing that, when we finally get to that point in our life, all things will be for the glory of God. All things that we do will be for the glory of God. That's the end game. In the instructions, that's the end game. Do everything that you do for the glory of God, and he will get the glory. And be thankful. Be thankful through it. Doesn't he say that we're supposed to have joy in every situation through the good and the bad? We are supposed to have joy. Be thankful. That's being thankful in those situations. Renee, would you come up? So I'm give you an opportunity. Come on up, my love. Where's my oil? Opportunity for prayer every day, always. Father God, we ask right now that you would uh, touch the hearts and the minds of your people. Father God, we're not mind readers or foreseers or foresayers or whatever they're called. Father God, we ask that you would touch their hearts and their minds today, Lord. That every situation that they've got going on in their life, Father God, we agree that you are overseeing it. And, Father God, we want to agree with them right now. And so if they want prayer, Father God, have them come forward. Lord, we will touch them. We will anoint them. We will pray with them. And we will stand in agreement, Father God, for the things in their life that they need you to take care of. Lord, we give you glory and praise now in this place. And we ask that you would show your face to each and every one of us. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. Let's pray today. We don't know what the next hour is going to bring. Let's pray right now. <coughs> Father God, touch these hearts. Touch these people. Touch this family. Father God, love on them. Caress them. Take care of them. Father, we are so thankful for all that you have done and all that you will do. Lord, all things are done in Jesus' name, and we pray. Amen. I need to take a drink of water. We're going to close out service with this song that she's playing. Those of you that need to just bask in him this morning, and you know, we may ask you to come up and that the altar's open, um, but I want to just let you know that it is an audience of one. When we, that day, when we go to stand before our Father, you're not going to have somebody standing beside you telling you what to say or telling you what to do. Or, I mean, it really seriously is. So as we end service with a song, it's an old one, and so you're going to learn it really quick. Um, just take the words and really soak them into what you're saying, okay? All hell, King 
Jesus. All hail Emmanuel, King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star. And throughout eternity, I'm gonna to praise you. Sorry. the chorus to the hymn, yes. Father, we ask that you bless our week and you go with us. And Father, allow us to be that ambassador for you that people will see in us so that we can see you within us and Father, allow us to be able to one another, each other. And we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Oh, so you and I get to say it today. <laughs> and if you haven't heard it anywhere else, we love you. And so do we. Go, oh, God loves you. See, I don't do it very often. He does it. So God loves you, and so do we. God bless you.